Hello everyone, welcome back to the Digital Warm. Today we'll be unboxing a ThinkPad X1 Carbon 7th Gen. Uh, quite a big unboxing on this channel. I've never had something so exquisite, so expensive on this channel. But here it is. It's going to be my main laptop for around five years or so. So this is a box of the laptop itself. X1. Around it. We got some labels here and some pin code information, serial numbers, etc. But before we get to this, we'll have a look at the stuff that actually came with the laptop. So we've got a HDMI to VGA adapter, a ThinkPad Ethernet adapter, and ThinkPad branded bag. So moving on to the laptop itself, uh, I'm just going to open it using two hands here. Get that off. The seal, I already broke it at the shop. Okay, so what we have on the side here? On the side, in this box right here, we've got the USB-C 65 watt power charger wrapped in some plastic and it's uh, definitely USB-C on the other hand as you can see here quite a long cable uh, I'm guessing this is the slim 65 watt charger not really sure but it is a USB-C power delivery charger you could probably use uh, other USB-C power delivery devices in order to charge your X1 Carbon. Now moving on to the laptop itself. Oh my god. This is a lot of stuff. Alright. Ooh. Okay. We've got what seems like another ThinkPad Ethernet adapter. Some safety manuals. Let's take that out. Of this plastic ziplock bag and uh, ThinkPad X1 carbon setup guide, safety and warranty guide, and uh, another Ethernet adapter. So, I guess if I lose one, I have a replacement right here. So, we're, let's move on to the star of the show laptop itself. It's strange because I've seen on other unboxings, this should have come in the red and black box, but uh, I got this instead in a plastic wrap. Oh, that's slippery. The plastic wrap. I already broke the seal. So let's get it out. Oh, that's really nice. Super nice. As you can see, X1 on the top corner. Shiny ThinkPad logo. This should light up. When the computer is on around the device this is the back with my serial numbers and stuff it's uh, definitely a seventh gen right there all right on the side let's check out the ports we've got uh, usb type c let's get that in focus usb type c charging with a charging led right there a thunderbolt connector uh, ethernet breakout USB 3.1, USB A, uh, HDMI port, headphone jack. Right on the side, we have got uh, something that looks like a Kensington lock slot, uh, the vent, another USB A port that is always powered on even when the device is sleeping, and we've got the power button itself. Here's another look at the back. We've got the tiny vent for the i7 processor that is in this laptop uh, Windows logo. Although in a future video, I'll show you my process of installing Fedora Linux on this particular laptop. So let's clean. Let's get this thing cleaned up and let's film it booting up for the first time. Right. So I'm back. I've just. Uh, Unwrapped all of the charging cable and cleaned up the mess that's behind me right now. But uh, we have the laptop plugged in. 
let's power this on. Not for the first time. Uh, unfortunately, I've already done that at the shop because you know you gotta verify everything's working. Uh, but uh, while this is booting up, oh, <laughs> that's fast. I didn't even have the chance to say the specs of this machine. Let's get this camera to focus. All right. So that's the device right there. The display, in my opinion, looks really, really nice. Uh, let's uh, just zoom in a bit. Oh my God, the quality is probably terrible, but uh, you guys get the idea. The colors are really vibrant, extremely vibrant. I love the display on this thing. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a 2K display. Not really the display option I wanted. I would have preferred um, the low power full HD display instead of this. But this is the device they've got in stock, so so be it. So I'll be connecting to Wi-Fi and I'm going to show you how to update the BIOS and all the system utilities in this device. I'll get back to you later. All right, so I've actually unfortunately lost the footage of updating Windows. However, all you have to do is open Windows Update and click install on all of the updates in there and open Lenovo Vantage and we'll do the same. All right now, so I've just finished updating everything on the Windows side of things. Uh, right now, we'll be uh, installing Linux on this machine. So let's power it up. Uh, we'll need to change a couple of settings in the setup of this machine before we could proceed. You'll present us with this interface. You'll have to go to config, power, and set the sleep state to Linux, switch it from Windows 10 to Linux. Then all you have to do is click restart by using this option. At the boot menu, you have to pick the USB where you have a copy of Linux on. So I'll just click it. Press enter. Give it a moment to start up. This might take a while because uh, in the latest version of Ubuntu, it will automatically check the USB drive for any errors before it attempts installation. So uh, you'll have to wait for a couple of moments for this to finish. and it has is starting to check the USB drive. It uh, should take a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your USB. I'm using a 32 gigabyte Kingston USB free disk, which is relatively fast. So it should complete quite quickly.
and it has finished checking the disk we'll have to give it a couple of more moments and uh, we could see the UI here we'll click on install since we're installing this uh, you can change your keyboard layout here if you want I have a US layout and I want to use my device in US English so I'll just hit continue right here you can connect to a Wi-Fi network I'm just going to select mine enter the password no wrong password sorry about that And right here, I'll just select minimal installation since most of the things that are on the normal one, I'll never even use. I need to input a password for configuring your secure boot. I still have secure boot enabled. And here you can select the options you'd want. I will encrypt my internal SSD. And here you can set a password to unlock the disk every time you start your computer. And uh, all you have to do right now is click install, wait for it to detect all of the things going on on your disk, and it will figure out the best way to partition it up. Shouldn't take too long since we have a relatively fast SSD. As you can see, it's all finished. It's going to show you what it will create. We're just going to leave it at the defaults and hit continue. It should uh, start partitioning your disk in the background right now while it leads you to the time zone selection screen. If you have connected to Wi-Fi at an earlier step, you will not need to select it. It'll figure it out automatically for you. Hit continue. As you can see, the time has changed to my local time. And now we're presented with a setup screen for our personal details. So we're just going to input that in. And I'll just leave it on require my password to log in for security. And uh, all you have to do now is wait. I guess I'll come back to you once all of this is done.
I guess um, we're going to reboot this now. I'll get back to you once this laptop has finished setting up. Oh, that USB port is very tight when this laptop is new. Maybe we disconnect that. And we'll wait for it to boot up. We'll enroll the key. And so we're, I'm back. We, the laptop has finished setting up, and it's basically very well functional already. I guess what you have to do now after the install is to install your required software. Actually, before that, uh, install any available updates, especially for the system firmware or the fingerprint sensor that we have here. After you install the new firmware, it should be supported. Actually, let's show that fingerprint sensor is working. Let's go to users. And as you can see, fingerprint login is available. And yeah, that's basically it for Linux install. It's just flipping a setting in BIOS for the sleep to Linux, popping your favorite Linux distro onto it by whatever means you need or want or require and enjoy there's nothing really that much difficult to it thinkpads are well known for great linux support and then this x1 carbon does not seem to be any different so yeah i guess that's it for my video if you liked it please like and subscribe to my channel I may upload more videos regarding this laptop in the future on whatever uh, you guys want or uh, what I feel like needs to be said about this device. I'll definitely post a full review with this uh, running on Linux soon. So if you want to see that, please stay tuned. And as always, um, bye.